Okay, Doug Coy, uh, here we are. It's a Saturday morning. I'm out on my porch in uh, Gastown, and Craig McCulloch is somewhere up in Burnaby Mountain. And, of course, Craig is our uh, news hound, a uh, fellow that I've worked with for many, many, many years now. We won't say how many, at least ten, I think. And, uh, He's off getting and there, on. yes. Yeah, in various stages. Uh, but he also uh, reports for a number of different news agencies and has been heavily involved in uh, the news business all the way back going into high school with Greg. Uh, so there you go, Craig McCulloch. Uh, Craig, the big story still going on right now, of course, is the riots. Uh, what, what were you doing that night, Craig? I went down to the Waterfront Hotel, which ironically I think is one of those buildings almost right beside your right ear there behind you, Doug. Yeah. And uh, I bought underneath there. It's a four-star hotel across from Pan Pacific, which is a five-star hotel. And there's a live site down there. There's a live viewing site with a giant monitor on the side of uh, Canada Place, which ironically is by your other ear in the background. So the game ended just before 8 o'clock, and uh, I listened to what the local radio stations to the app on my BlackBerry, and I heard about the cars being burned and the unrest happening at the main live site in Vancouver which is at George and Hamilton outside the CBC, uh, Queen Elizabeth Theater, the main post office, and the main library. I started walking over, and I noticed the mounted horse squad, which you can smell as much as you can see, was walking uh, down Pender Street. So I gave them space, because the horses kind of discharge at will, and I just kind of followed them in, and ended up spending uh, quite a bit of my time around the art gallery, not the art gallery, sorry, the post office. And then I made my way over um, I saw a lot of smoke, and it turns out the Bay Parkade had four or five cars on fire, which is where I normally park, where I parked throughout the Olympics. So I was real glad my car wasn't there because my stress level would have gone up exponentially. Did I hear right from you that uh, you were in a position for uh, one of the young men that tried to jump off the viaduct? Uh, they were, I don't know if they were just goofing around or what, but. They, they jumped, tried to jump from the, the viaduct, the bridge, over to a city street. A couple of them made it, and one fellow did not. So there is a gap between the passenger access way to GM Place and the actual viaduct. Very narrow, but just enough for a person who's not as fat as I am to slide through and land on the ground. And a lot of people were trying to jump off in the passenger way onto Dunsmere Street, which then is the viaduct. And most people made it over, but this guy didn't make it over and fell through. Now, why the hell that gap wasn't sealed years ago? I never noticed it was there. I've been on those, you know, I've been on those walkways dozens of times. I don't know. He fell about 40, 45 feet and landed on this on the pavement below, which is right in front of the Canucks ticket office. Um, and apparently, he's in stable condition. Were you surprised that this uh, riot uh, took place? Um, disappointed, I guess, would be the key word. Um, I've been in the WTO riots in Seattle 99 and I was on the periphery. I did not see as much as the 94 Stanley Cup riot. Um, it didn't um, overtly surprise me. When I was talking to my editors uh, at NPR and talking to the news director at KPLU, there was always that, well, if something does happen. I should point it out, last time I think it was the Red Sox won in Boston, they won. There was a riot and three people died. And that was when the team won. Um, so no, it, 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 it disappointed me, but it didn't shock me, if that makes any sense. It, it, it would have happened either way, Doug. If Vancouver yeah. had won the Stanley Cup, it would have happened. So it's almost better that the Canucks lose this year, this happens, they win next year, and it doesn't happen. <laughs> I just want to, want to say one thing about CNN, by the way, okay? Uh -oh. Now, I know some people who work at CNN, and they are top quality individuals and journalists, second to none. But one of their morning anchors, who I believe might have been based in Atlanta, Georgia, called Vancouver the loser city. Let's recap this, shall we? It's a city that, that held one of the worst rated Olympics in history, that couldn't keep the town safe or have their buses on time. Now you're talking about Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, that couldn't even keep their hockey team. Twice. Their first team's now in Calgary. Their second team is going back to Winnipeg. And they're still fighting a lot of the war that ended back in 1865 with racial segregation down there. And that city, which I'm sure I've, I've heard a lot of great things about Atlanta, 
But there's an anchor or a producer in Atlanta, Georgia, who's saying that about another city. Come on. CNN is a truly great news network. But that was not one of their shining moments. And, and I'll tell you what, the Stanley Cup is one of the, I think next to the World Cup, probably the Stanley Cup is one of the hardest uh, cups to win, uh, uh, championships to win. It is unbelievable the, the, the toll that takes on the human body. And these mm-hmm. people that get upset with guys like Luongo and say, you know, you know, most of these guys have never played sports. Or if they have, it was tiddlywinks or something like that because yeah, they have no idea. The bar or something. Yeah, they have no idea the stress that it puts on the human body. Night after night after night after night, not to mention the emotional stress. And I felt I was very proud of Luongo. I was very proud of Kessler. Kessler had a tough year. He lost in the Olympics because he was playing for the Americans. And he lost in the Stanley Cup. And when they went and interviewed him, uh, he manned up. You know, he didn't make excuses. They asked him, are you hurt? He was. He didn't use it. He didn't go there. Uh, the organization itself really touched me, and the fans, the real fans, at the end of the game, cheering the Canucks on, thank you for a great season. Uh, and they stayed there as a presentation was made to Boston. I was very proud of our Canadian fans uh, in the arena that night, in the arena, the way mm-hmm. they treated the situation. The thing we have to remember too, Doug, is the majority of the Boston Bruin players, there's over 20 <laughs> of them, are actually Canadian. Uh, that includes the coach, and that includes the president who's from Vancouver, and, and Milan Lukic. For the, yeah, for the Giants. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah who's, who's, from, uh, who's from East Van. Have a good one, Craig. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye, Doug. Bye-bye.